Yo, it's your boy Picante Nino coming at you with another Zerker video. Today we're gonna be going over PVE. A lot of changes have recently happened with Berserker and PVE, and I kind of just needed time to test out a lot of stuff. That's why this video is coming out a little bit later than I would like it to be. We're gonna be going over skill add-ons, crystal builds, artifacts, and just basically the, the rotations of PVE and if you never PVE'd with Awakening Zerker before. So let's just jump into it. So let's just jump right into skill add-ons. These skill add-ons are basically a lot easier to use than they were previously because all the skills actually were tied to a different kind of stack. Now they all inherit the same stack regardless of the skill. So this makes it a lot easier because now we can just pick the best stacks that we want and just put them on the skills that we use the most. So these are the skills that I personally use the most for PvE. And so let's just jump into it. So for blasting, I like to use the 5% for 7 seconds, and then the DP minus 20. So this makes the mob squishier, and if you're having accuracy problems, there you go. Round lifting gives you extra AP against monsters. That's also a really fast skill, and it also lasts for 12 seconds. So the cooldown on ground lifting is less than the 12 second cooldown, so you can always keep this up regardless. And plus, ground lifting is comboed into almost any skill, which makes it a lot easier. Critical hit damage plus 5%, this one's a necessity to have because all of your highest damaging skills have 100% crit. So you need this up all the time. So putting out a very cancelable skill for ground lifting is a win. Seismic Blast, this is your hardest hitting skill. Some of, some of these things you want to like double up on in case you don't start off your combo with blasting. So you definitely do want to double up on the important ones that you want to use. So we're getting the minus DP again for 20. Back attack damage is really important. You could interchange the back attack damage one out in case you're fighting mobs that you're doing down attack damage. But for me, since I'm fighting harder mobs that don't get knocked down on their butt, I opt for the back attack damage. But if you're fighting something like Star's End, that like you use the crystal to knock down, then replace that back attack damage with down attack damage. Easy, easy. Now for Titan Blow. This one is the one that you guys could experiment with. This is the one that I like to just like be goofy with. But obviously we're, re we're reiterating on the monster damage. We always need these up regardless of where you're at. See, though this one you could change for, what is it, critical hit rate plus 30%, but I feel like since all of our damage, our front-loaded damage has already 100% crit, it really doesn't matter to take the crit rate. Uh, some other skills like Frenzy Destroyer or anything like that don't have 100% crit rate, but you don't use those that often. I rather prefer the 10% attack speed. The reason why is whenever you do Titan Blow, you get basically 10% attack speed for 12 seconds right but if you're if you're comboing it with, with ground lift you get 20% from the ground lift and then 10% from the from the titan blow which is a crazy amount you're getting 30% attack speed just constantly up during your grind that's why I take the 10% for titan blow if you really don't like that you can replace it with 30% uh, increase for critical hit rate now for slugfest this is the one that you immediately use after your damage combo either it's that or ancient wave so, obviously, critical hit rate, all accuracy rate plus 5, because, you know, Slugfest is a skill that does miss a lot, because it does have a lot of hits. So, you definitely do want to stack some extra accuracy on it. Critical hit damage, these, this is one of the skills that doesn't have a lot of crit on it, but having the critical hit damage, we're going to be critting a lot on here. Ancient Wave. Ancient Wave is just another iteration. It makes the thing last longer, so that means you can make it, you can have this up for a long time, and... It actually extends to basically two volleys of PvE damage. And then the same thing with the, uh, the minus 20. You obviously want this skill to have the hardest hitting um, skills out of all of them because this one does last the longest compared to everything else. So on your Ancient Wave, this one has a longer duration than all the other ones. So you definitely do want to stack the two hardest hitting ones on here. And so those are my PvE add-ons. I know other Zerkers, you know, do stuff differently, but this is what I like to use personally whenever I'm grinding out there in open world. So let's move on to the next one.
So right now, we're just going to be going over artifacts and crystals. I'm not going to explain too, too much on everything because we're going to be here forever just on the crystal part. So let me just explain to you what kind of crystals I like to run. So this is my standard PvE build. And I'm just going to leave this right here so you guys can take a screenshot of what I'm using. Uh, the only thing that you can get better with this crystal build is changing the bong water tier into a Giren tier. That's basically it, but I think this is like the best in slot crystal build for Zerker at the moment. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is it. So this is my standard PvE crystal for anything in the world. So if I'm going to grind a spot that I don't know, and I kind of just want to make money, this is the build. I know some of you gamers are up there when it comes to Thornwood, or you're getting towards Thornwood. You definitely do need another crystal build for Thornwood. So I do have a crystal build exactly for Thornwood, so I'm just going to apply it here. This might not be the best crystal build for Thornwood, but this does give you all the resistances you need to grind Thornwood without even getting annoyed by the mob CCs. So if you guys see right here, let me bring this up. We are at 97% knockback resistance, which is honestly the only thing that you need to worry about. Oh, but that 3%, the 3% isn't going to happen. Don't worry about it. But if you hit your Q buff and you're finding a Dark Knight, these things actually just almost cap out. The knockdown from the Dark Knight is going to keep you pretty safe whenever you hit that Q buff. So there really isn't anything too, too crazy with this crystal build other than just the resistances. Let me leave it up for you guys again so you guys can see it. Take a screenshot, do whatever. And that's about it. So let me put up the other, the other build, the other PvE build. This is my standard PvE build. And so yeah, if you guys are curious to see what additives these crystals give you, and if you guys don't know too too much about the stats in the game, you could also hit P, click this little arrow right here where it says battle stats, and basically all you do is you get your air, whatever AP you want, right here, I'm awakening, so I'm going to use awakening AP, put this, you add it with the extra AP with the monsters, and that is your total AP. So right now I think Darkseeker's Retreat has a thousand AP cap so that means like i'm usually around 940 ap so i'm not hitting the cap almost exactly but this is how you could check your ap on a minuscule level whenever you're doing any type of crystal builds or increases so now let's go on to basically artifacts uh these artifacts are kind of end game um so i don't expect you guys to be running this new artifact right here oh damn i actually went up in price oh lord um but this is what you guys want to run in Endgame. This is what I personally use. So I use the two Kuba artifacts, and then I use a double strike combo, which is honestly kind of expensive. I don't expect anyone to be running this, but this is what I personally use. I don't care about the damage reduction minus 15 because the Kubas give you 20 each. So you're just stacking a crap ton of AP onto it. So this is what you would want to run for Endgame. I know there's other crystal builds that might adapt to your playstyle better, but this is an example of what a crystal lightstone build looks like. So with that, let's just move on to the important skills of grinding on Awakening Zerker. Okay, so let's move on to important skills that you need to keep on using. Let's go over the combo. So the skills that you want to keep note of are Blasting and basically Ground Lift. So Blasting gives you 16 melee AP for 10 seconds just on the skill without a add-on, which is amazing. So we're going to always lead off with this and Flame Pummel first. Because Flame Pummel basically does the melee accuracy portion of it attached to it. So you're going to do Blasting into Flame Pummel. Usually in that, you could throw on a uh, Ground Lifting as well to get that 20% attack speed on the skill itself. It's not an add-on, it's tied to the skill. After that, you're going to go on to your main damage meat of the skills. So you're going to go into Seismic Blast. Right after Seismic Blast, you're going to go into Scattershot. And then from Scattershot, you're going to go into Titan Blow. Though That is your main bread and butter damage combo. So it's Seismic Blast, Scattershot, Titan Blow. Your Blasting and your Flame Pumbles are your openings, along with an occasional Ground Lift in between. And then you're going to go Seismic Blast, Scattershot, Titan Blow. That's literally your bread and butter. This, if you were to take out anything from this video, it's Seismic Blast, Scattershot, Titan Blow. Always. And then your damage enders are either going to be Slugfest, which is down here, 
or is it going to be Ancient Wave? Don't worry, you guys. I'm going to put a little picture above my character showing you the skill, you know, the skill order, how everything flows. I'm just teaching you guys how it is going to work. So from that, you can also throw in some split shots right after time blow. And you're just going to keep on repeating the same thing. You're going to be blasting, flame pummel, ground lift, or it could be blasting, ground lift, flame pummel. The ground lift, just include it somewhere that's easily cancelable for you. Sometimes I do it backwards. It really doesn't matter where you throw in the ground lift. Just make sure you're throwing in a ground lift for that plus 20% attack speed. And then the main thing is seismic blast, scatter shot, titan blow, and then ancient wave or slugfest, and then you just repeat. I do also use devastation, but devastation I only use it whenever I have no skills when everything is on cooldown and usually the full duration of the devastation basically brings all these back up because they all have the same cooldown they have a six second cooldown so that means by the time one of them's up that means all of them is up so you can do the same volley again blasting ground lift flame pummel seismic blast scatter shot titan blow and then if your ancient wave's up you throw an ancient wave if your ancient wave's not up you throw a slug fest and then that's it you just rinse and repeat, and if you manage to just have everything on cooldown, then you swap back to a, a pre-awakening, and then you just throw off some um, frenzy destroyers. So basically, that is it. I'm gonna show you guys the full damage combo right here. So it's like blasting, ground lift, and then I'm gonna throw out an ancient wave. And then since my stuff's on cooldown, I'm gonna throw out a devastation, throw out this, do this, and then just keep on repeating. This time. Slugfest comes out because Ancient Wave's down, and that, that's basically it. And you just do this again. There we go. So I'm, I, I'm a very old school Zerker, so I kind of like doing the, the Frenzy Destroyer, but that's it. Just keep on repeating, man. And just keep on repeating. You see how I'm like hitting the cooldowns exactly as it is? And then like I'm going to throw out Devastation. Okay, my Scattershot combo is up. And then just keep on repeating. That's literally it. PvE is so simple on this class. So next we're going to go over certain little nuances of what certain skills act. You know, like the little things. So after this, we're going to move on to that. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Okay, so let's talk about Flame Pummel. Flame Pummel is one of the newer skills that they've recently added to Zerker's kit. I'm kind of on the fence about it, but it does have its uses. It gives you plus... 15 accuracy whenever you're grinding with it. So let's see the stat on Flame Pummel. It gives you plus 15% accuracy whenever it hits for 10 seconds, which is really good if you're grinding mobs that you are just struggling to hit when, because they have too much evasion. So definitely Flame Pummel is a really good opener and it basically acts as a pseudo blasting, if that makes sense. It does look like a blasting. So look, we're going to do Flame Pummel and it, it has the qualities of blasting, but it just makes you leap a little bit further obviously giving you the buff that it says it's going to give you so what's really cool about flame pummel is that it cancels into blasting or blasting cancels into it in a very weird way and what i mean by that is that usually you do two blastings for the damage but if you keep on holding on blasting it does flame pummel which is very weird you see that right there look blasting i'm just holding down blasting goes into flame pummel it, it, it's so it's so weird and goofy that it does you have to keep this in mind because sometimes it would just honestly animation lock you flame pummel animation locks see, i'm trying to cancel out of it and it, it just animation locks you so now we go over here we hold it down and it just basically does that but what's really cool about the blasting in order to cancel off the automatic combo from blasting you could do ground lift right after so it's like two ground lift and then straight into your flame pummel so that's what i used to do to to stack the the ground the ground lifting attack speed so it's just two blastings and if you don't cancel it this is why i always mess up on it so it's just two blastings spam that ground lift into flame pummel into your damage combo right here Basically, that, that's it right there, man. That's it. So it's like blasting, ground lift, flame pummel. That, that's what you need to get used to. If not, you're going to animation lock yourself by just holding down blasting too, too much. Because it's just going to go into flame pummel. What's really cool about this is that a lot of people think that the full cast by hitting Q on flame pummel gives you the blasting buff. It does not. So you actually have to 
do blasting to get the AP buff and then go into flame pumble for the for the accuracy. So it's very important that you know this little combo on the opening. So it's two blastings, ground lift, flame pumble, hard cast, okay? If not, you're gonna miss out on the additive stacks from your skill add-ons from the, the blasting and the ground lift on top of just not having the attack speed. So that is it. Another thing that you need to keep in mind too is that Ultimate Frenzy Destroyer, which a lot of people do use in PvE, it you could honestly you don't have to do this and you need to like hold down this. You could honestly just well, I need to wait for it to go off a cooldown. But you can honestly just hold down left click while you're doing a, a frenzy destroyer. So you just like you can just hold it down. So you can just be very lazy and just hold down shift left click down, and it just automatically does it. You don't have to do like immediately do the whatever he's asking you on it. So it's just a very lazy way of grinding, similar to how your blasting automatically cancels into flame fumble. So you get both of the stacks up. It's just something to keep in mind that will make it a little bit more effective on grinding. And with that, you guys, that's the end of the video. I appreciate you guys watching. I could go more into depth into the PvE stuff, but I'm just going to keep it short because this video is already going on long enough. And with that, you guys, I stream Mondays through Thursdays. So if you guys want to help out a fellow local Zerker, a small streamer like me, you know, feel free to leave me a follow on Twitch if you found this uh, kind of interesting or kind of informative for you. If not, just subscribe. That will be amazing, too. And with that, you guys, I'm your go-to Zerker for Awakening. So, yeah, let's... I'll keep on making videos for you guys, regardless of what happens in the future. If Zerker gets nerfed, if Zerker doesn't get nerfed. We're actually expecting a couple of buffs to our skills in the future. But I doubt that this is going to change the guide too, too much. Because the base of this is already here. Our skill add-ons are already here. And basically, we just had a big content drop of all the crystals. And with that, you guys, I'm happy to bring you guys this new PvE update. Hopefully, this lasts a bit longer than what I thought it was. And with that, thank you guys.